arguing about fantasy baseball trades before we've been on camera. I just want you to know so you understand what happens with this show. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the Internet's most passionate wine program. We have a very exciting show for you today. Uh, I'm very excited because I'm hungry and there's cheese in front of me. I also have one of my favorite people in the world, not only the head of our gourmet department at gourmetlibrary.com. Mott, link that up. <laughs> you haven't done a lot of linking up lately. That was fun to do, actually. That felt good. But he's my wonderful brother-in-law, Justin Novello. Justin, say hello to the Vayner Nation. What's up, guys? How you doing? Sorry, I'm... Got to represent here a little bit. I didn't even realize I was wearing it until Chris was like, yes, he's take it off! <laughs> he's a Raiders fan, but not, we're not offended by that. They're, not, they're literally the worst team in the last decade. Oh, God, I got it's it. Lions, I want to cry. <laughs> um, just, I asked you to do a cheese show with me today. Yes. I said, pick any three cheeses, and we worked backwards. K. Murph then paired these wines with your cheese yes. selections. So why don't we start off with... Um, why don't we start off? What, we need to get closer. The bottles are in your bottles. Way lot. But this is how they're. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. See the yeah, we can see the cheese. Let's see the cheese. Um, it's a big ass knife. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna cut this one with it. So. Why don't we start with? Uh, why don't you give us a little uh, state of the union with Gourmet Library from the standpoint of not? You know, everybody knows we launched this site, but what about what are people eating these? What, what's what's hot in the cheese world? Well, I mean, basically what we try to do... With... Not what we try to do. Okay, okay. Don't give me what you want to do or what you're trying to accomplish. Tell me what people are coming in and asking for. What we're trying to do at Wine Library is to get people to try different things, but they're buying Argentinian Malbecs. What's happening in the cheese world it, it, right now? It's, it's really pretty crazy. People come in and they grab stuff all across the board, from some crazy spices to Cipriani Bellini mix to the most random French chocolate that you could possibly get your hands on. Not even cheese sometimes. We're 50-50 on regular non-cheese products with like dry goods and and then we have the other half that have just cheese. So the orders are really, really far and very few between you know, any kind of like... So with your answer, even though I tried to it's get... It's sort of random. I, I hate to, the, I hate the, to be... Sp no, no, listen. Tell the truth. I don't care. You know, it's crazy So, so there's no hot cheese right now. There, there, you know what? The thing is, when it comes to something that's hot, people gobble it up. They know it. They taste it. They, they, it gets on fire. And when things show well, there's nothing better than. And when you say show well, well, you mean downstairs when we're sampling it? Not only. I mean, when a batch looks good, when a batch smells good, when there's a certain. Um, so the customers are coming in and smelling it. And making decisions? Absolutely. When something looks better, like, for example, Barada's better in the summer than it is in the winter because people don't realize so it's like tomatoes, cheese. right? People are like, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, this feels great. This is awesome. You know, it all has so to do with... So people know that stuff. They know. And even if they don't know it, they Ma, realize did it. Did you ever squeeze a cheese? Yeah. Squeeze the cheese, Mott. <laughs> I mean, Chris, Ma, sorry. <laughs> Mott has been known to squeeze the cheese sometimes. You know? <laughs> squeeze it, dude. <laughs> You'll like it. All right, so... Why did you pick these three, and what did you pick, and let's explain okay, them. Okay, so that leads into why I picked these, because they are showing very nicely. This is their time of year. So, it's a, yes, or the cheesemaker did a great job this time. Okay. And uh, this one I, I chose, this is the um, Prairie Breeze Cheddar. It's from Iowa. It's the best in its class at the ACS last year. So this was the no best in its class within Iowa, or cheddar cheese in America? In America, for artisan small production block cheddar which is block cheddars are, are actually aged in a huge block um, different than cloth bound and at that point they have different kinds of aging process and the calcium moves around differently this is very small production by a father and son in Iowa at the Prairie Breeze Dairy and it's it's made with um, made, <laughs> made with some really small production milk and it's really terrific stuff and what is it per pound this is 13.99 a pound and how much how many pounds do they make do you know uh, they, they make a lot. It's not, I mean, so it's small production by like, by, by the like standards, but well, like, it's small production by standards of block cheddar. Okay. Okay. And they make, and block cheddar is a big, big Yeah, block. I mean, it's easy to make those, those vats are humongous. Um, but for what it is, so how big is the block that we get? We get like a 40 pound block. So it's like a 40 pound yes, block. Yes. We okay. get a 40 pound block. Okay. Fine. So that's 1399 from yes. Iowa, home of Sean Green, best running back in football. Um, okay, so what about the next cheese? Okay, the Le Fleure, this is something we special air order from France. It's a it's a soft, ripened goat's milk cheese, and it's special in the fact that Ooh, it's, um, soft. it's very soft. Oh, it's, soft. It, it's very unique texture. Um, 
it's very buttery and like looks creamy texture. Like and it. the outside is um, got the they use the geotrichum rind, uh, the mold to create the rind on this. So it's a bloomy rinded goat's milk that we have air flown in. Uh, once every two weeks in here and this is one of my personal favorites I had to go out of my way to find a source for this and I don't see it much on the market Le Flore, I don't know what this translates to um, came yeah I, I think the closest thing I found was was um, flour but uh, okay. that's with the eye and, and so what what is this price this is $8.99 $8.99 for yeah. this little wheel for that for okay. that wheel okay and then this serious looking thing now this is uh, <laughs> this is interesting <laughs> you like this mop it's Erner Muschli. Erner um, Muschli. Muschli means wheel. Um, okay. It's from uh, CH, Confederation of Helvetia in Switzerland. Um, it's um, from the town of Selig in the center um, by Lake Lucerne, I think. And, and um, again, very small family production. Um, they only make, uh, I think, I think they make something like two or three hundred wheels a season on these. What? Yeah, and look how small they are. They only make two or three hundred of these? Yeah. That's it? That's it. You're not sure, but you think well, that's right. Well, current production's very small. And when will be the next time they make Oh, I think they make this probably three or four times a year. So they make like a thousand of these wheels a year? They don't make a lot of this, yeah. Okay. You're not quite positive on that, well, but it's low production. It's very low production, yeah. And how much is this wheel? Well, this is a probably a pound and a half wheel, 20 bucks a pound. 20 bucks a pound. Yeah. Man, cheese people, I mean, if they want to... I'm going to cut this. Well, that's fine. Um... <laughs> That's crazy to me. If they only make that little and it's that inexpensive, it feels like yeah, they, they don't make charge, a lot of this. They should at all. charge more. Yeah. Do you think? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. I mean, they make other cheeses there. Got it. So I see. I see. So this is one of the things. Oh. Well, just we're about show. to go over. Almost broke the show. Almost broke the show. <laughs> all right. All right. Show so them that. this is good. what it looks like. That's the pate in the center. This is a harder, firmer cheese. Okay. And it smells like. What does that smell like to you? It smells like feet. No, it smells a little... Actually, I disagree. I think it smells pretty nutty. You know? It smells it like a basement. Definitely has nutty. It smells like a basement. Like my old... At, like, it smells cobwebby. It's... Actually, you know what it smells like exactly? This smells exactly like the barn my dad had when I had a Queen of Pigs crap. <laughs> I'm serious. Wow, this smells exactly like like pig manure. Like the, like the way that cellar... That little barn thing smelled. Wow. And the cheese is probably not going to taste like that at all. But okay. actually, get just a guess. I haven't tried this wheel. Okay. All wheels are different. Okay. So let's start. What do you want to start with? Um, the Iowa cheese. What do you want? To, what wine do you want to start with? We can go with that. Well, let's start with the uh, let's start with the white blend, the X mm -hmm. winery. Mm -hmm. So not the Sauvignon Blanc and not the. Marie. Okay. So that'll be that'll that should go with this. Okay. Let's do that. So the first wine we have is the X winery 2008. White X, 57 Sauvignon Blanc, 20 Muscat Blanc, mm -hmm. 19 Chardonnay, and 4 Roussat. Really wild little blend, 12 bones, um, and it's 89 points Parker. Really fascinating white little blend. Um, so this is what K. Murph picked to pair with this. Really funky little wine from X Winery. Mainly Sauvignon Blanc and then, and then rounded out with Muscat, Chard, and Viognier. So that excites me, 12 bucks. X Winery has been producing some really interesting wines at value. So why don't we do this? Why don't we first sniffy sniff and taste the wine, and then we'll try it with the cheese. Got it. All right. So sniffy sniff it up. You're also a beer fan. I yes. know you, you drink yes. the beer. Yes. And you like the Xbox Live, right? Oh, I like the Xbox Live. What's your handle? Some people will hit you up. Um, Popeye seventy six. Popeye seventy six. I play with uh, Chris over here. Ma, what's your handle? Uh -oh. Come on. <laughs> they they're dying to play with you. You're, <laughs> <laughs> he's not gonna he's gonna give it you're not are you you're such a you're such a tight to the vest kind of guy this is why they like you more than me you're I like really play with these guys I know I know don't so he does he plays with he, so you're Popeye 76 Popeye 76 and what do you play I play Halo I play COD mostly just those two okay fine what are you getting on the nose I'm getting a lot of citrus agreed I agree a lot, a lot I love it. a lot of lemon lot of coming through I agree. I, the ruby uh, kind of almost like grapefruit juice. Mm. Good call. Grapefruity, lemony, mm, fresh. It not so much. Like... Not so much lime. It has a little floral component as well, but it has a clean nose. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, that's bright and fresh. You like this? I love it. Is it a little hot for you on the back end? The acidity or what? Got some acidity. But not too bad, right? Not too bad at all. A little sweet. 
you know what? Coming from the Muscat, this is a very interesting little blend. I mean, for Parker to give this an 89, where his palate's in a very different place, you can tell by the quality of this wine. I mean, this is very this clean. Is That was amazing. Your wife, my sister, would like this. Mm -mm. No? Too sweet she for She does her? like it. Oh, she's had it? Yeah, I didn't have it. She had it? She had it. Seriously? I brought it home for her. And? And she likes it. She doesn't like wine. What's that? <laughs> she doesn't like that much wine. I know. That's why I thought she would like it. That little hint of residual sugar, just an oomph. Not sweet. I don't want to confuse anybody. But there's this little hint on the back end that's just really pretty and makes it very accessible. My sister... Liz uh, likes, you know, German Rieslings and things of that nature, and that's what makes me think of this a little bit. It's got a little bit of that German Riesling play because of that, you know, especially like spot lace, but not that sweet. It's got a little hint of that sweetness, but high acid, almost so, you know, the Sauvignon Blanc comes through, and it's almost like an imaginary blend of a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and, you know, Dr. L Riesling, Lucent, you know, kind of that kind of thing going on, but with more weight. Um, pretty interesting little wine. Oh, this is awesome. It's not too sweet either. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot, actually. I like it a lot, actually. I think it's very drinkable. And um, mm. and I think it is an 89 plus point wine. And for 12 bucks, this is very much dudes for ladies that sometimes don't like wine. This would be a good entry level. Or Absolutely. or ladies for your husband that's like, I don't like wine. This could be a very intriguing entry level wine. This is really food friendly, too. I, well, I could see it going to everything, actually. <laughs> So this is from Iowa. Yeah, you can see how the curds are like all stuck together in there. I do cool. see that. Mm. So just I'm trying to warm it up a little this bit. This is not, um, not the sharpest cheddar I've ever had. Not even by a long cheddars, stretch. Cheddars aren't normally sharp. Okay. That's American style cheddars that okay. are like cabbage. So is that a bit. is that a myth or is that just an American? It's thing? not a myth. It's actually just a style that came to the states. I like sharp cheddars. Mm -hmm. This is not sharp. This is more it has nutty. A, it has, you know, oh. I'd almost call this more balanced. Mm -hmm. You know, because it does have a little sharpness, but it's a, it's very creamy, mm -hmm. very creamy actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, really creamy. I'm trying to heat this up a little bit, but yeah, it's why very creamy. Heating, why are we heating? I want to get it to room temperature. I want to get it to like so I can like it's a little cold. Like we're drinking the wine warm, you know, just so they know that. And having these together, I mean, you get all oh, the they flavors. Know. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, that's a big thing I talk right. about. Thanks, awesome. thanks for watching the show, Dave. <laughs> um, so, um, really, really, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> uh, really well made. Absolutely, um, I like it. I mean, I'm a big, big cheese fan, but not mm. as knowledgeable as Justin. But what I what I did want to point out was, mm. uh, I'm surprised at the lack of sharpness, but it's very creamy. Wait. I mean, it almost it's very creamy to me. Actually, it's, I'm like, and it has a little floral that. component too to it. I didn't get. I that. get some nuttiness. I get the nuttiness in a big way. Hmm. I get the floor on the back end with a little bit of the acidity. But there's a lot of flavors it sounds like in wine. here. Oh, it's totally. I know. Yeah. Hey, Mott, get in here. I think You like cheese, Mott? You do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to give your handle out. <laughs> All right, mm. good. Let's move on. Good cheese. Great little pairing. I mean, you know, I think both of these probably fall in the same category of being like mm. easy to consume. Not going to bother anybody on either palate. I don't see this cheddar bothering people because of its sharpness. It seems very easily easy. It is. It's easy and it's fun and it's almost. it almost can capture those people who do like the cheddar. I don't know how to completely break it down and Justin will jump in a second, but this is easy and fun but complex enough to appease people. Hence an 89 from Parker. You'd never think this was the kind of wine he would score, but I see where, where he maybe came from. For me, it appeals so much on the mid-palate complexity. There's almost like this ginger spice little floral thing but then that sweetness it's 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 simple but complex you know a lot of times I think easy drinking gets thought about as too simple is that conceivably what's going on with this cheese I, I believe so and I think that's why the pairing works out I think it's it's fun it's forward and it also has a really nice finish to it just, I agree. just like really the wine. good okay let's move on all right next we're gonna do a Sauvignon Blanc it looks like so I assume that's what we're doing with the yeah lay for it don't lay for it Florette, Florette, right? Florette, lay Yep. All right. Matt, what are you doing? Is it for the other bucket. Oh no, we'll be fine. So we're gonna take it out of the box. You could always put it back when you're done. Let's peel it off here. Now this is the Southern Right 2009 Sauvignon Blanc from South Africa, 11 U.S. dollars. Um, 
Justin, putting you on the spot right now, who's going to win the World Cup because it's in South Africa this year? Who's going to win it? Yeah. I wonder if Italy's going to win it. That's who you think? Matt, what do you think? I don't follow football. But I understand, but you've got to make a prediction right now. Brazil. Yeah. And you mm. went with Italy. You I'm going to go really. Yeah, okay. Heritage. I'll save mine for later. I do a little more. Can we drink it? Oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> all right. Wait, what? Um, so let's so do this. So wait, who's, you're not going to say South who? Africa. You're going to say South They're Africa? They're going to win. The home team's going to win it all. All right. Let's go into this. I'm Hope dying so. for this. This is my style. So first we're going to do the wine. I'm sorry. I can't even wait. Um, Southern right. Sauvignon Blanc from uh, South Africa. Yeah, it's stinky. I wanted, it's stinky. I wanted to show the texture. We'll show it. All right. Well, let's go. Let's do your... Uh, Mom, we'll wine. zoom sorry, in. Man. It's all right. It's all right. It's beautiful, it's doesn't it? I want to eat the crap out of it. Okay, <laughs> let's give it a sniffy a sniff. Bite it. <laughs> Holy crap. Wow. Okay. There's a lot going on in that smell here. For a second, I thought it was actually corked, believe it or not. Yeah, I thought I smelled the mustiness in there. But uh, it's burning off a little bit. Wow. So how green and green pea and grassy is this? My hay fever's actually. <laughs> this is wildly <laughs> green, a little jalapeno pepper, um, green pepper, grassiness, very green. Yeah, this which is, is an amazing color. This is. Wow, it's slightly corked. It is slightly corked. Wow, it's got some musty action in there. Wow, it's not that we bad. We got a though. corked wine. Not that bad. I'm though. excited. <laughs> I'm kind of excited. We haven't had one in a while. Yeah, it's cork. Wow, it's got a horrible finish. <laughs> well, I don't think it's a horrible finish. It's just it's just Ooh. a little off. All right. Mm -mm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's uh, let's rinse it out with the next wine. See if we can get that. Let's get a real big rinse because we need it to kind of get rid of that smell. As a matter of fact, Ma, can you give us two new glasses? This might just be too effective. That was pretty cork. All right, uh, SS Chris, for you at home, Thanks, let's sir. give that a uh, do not score or a cork or whatever you want. So the cheese cork. isn't corked. Uh, yeah, I doubt that. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's uh, let's eat the cheese at least. So yeah, let's eat this. Here, you go right. first. No, you you do it together. You want to get any chunk there? Yeah. All right. So. This is made from what? Goat? So, so this is a goat cheese, and you can see how it ages from the outside in. You can sort of see it. I'm going to just pick it up. You can see how it separates in there. Um, I'm going to cut it in half. You, you can see that the, uh, the gooey loveliness. Now, the geotrichum rind is edible. Gary and I are going to eat that. But you can see this is, this is a pretty young cheese. As it ages, it's going to get really buttery and actually almost to the point where it's runny. And either way, I love this cheese because it shows so well young, but as it gets better, as it gets older, it gets better in How texture. How much older? Um, you're talking, can you, know? you can probably go a month, maybe more. And it, don't be afraid if you see some blue mold on this thing, you can eat that too. Mm. Mm. So ridiculously mm. good. You love it? I love this cheese. Can we score this like 94 points? Oh my I god, love it. I love this cheese. Oh. Oh, wait a minute, Mott, you, we can link up so, the gourmet. Oh, yeah, they're all online. Yeah, we'll oh, yeah, link up all the gourmet library. So I, what kind of flavors are you getting out of there? I'm getting, like, the citrusy, a little bit, a, a nice fresh pop to it, a little bit of, actually, I'm getting a little bit of fruitiness in there. Is that just me? Okay. Um, it tastes a little like cottage cheese. Mm -hmm. um, that's, like, one of the first kind of things that pops in my head. Uh, mm. I taste a little bit of, like, an orange peel, almost like... You know, Grand Marnier, kind of like that orange peel spiciness, uh, which I like. And I like the consistency of this, of the, just the rind. Me too. It's got this like nice, like yeasty texture. Mm. All day. Use this in place of butter. What do you mean? Instead of uh, um, instead of butter, when you're buttering your bread, or if you get like a cranberry raisin or something like that, use this. It's fantastic. Tort, torta, the torta de aceite, use this. Awesome. So, so you're saying, especially if you, like right now it's a little bit thicker viscosity. Yes. Or, or structure. Yes. Or, yeah, well it's uh, a fresher, more fresh right now. So if you put, the, you buy this, you leave it in your fridge for like three weeks? Well, and what if you only eat half right now? You can leave it in your, in your fridge for another three or four weeks. It'll get runny. 
And yeah, that is awesome. That, I mean, it's just butter. You could spoon it out, sort of like uh, uh, like a clarine or something like that, if you're familiar with that cheese. But it's buttery, it's rich, and it's got a like little it. acidity that remains in there. Sometimes it gets more potent depending on the cheese. I get the you don't get the orange. I get I got orange. a fruitiness, but I couldn't identify it. I get know? a really interesting orange peel on the back end. Good stuff. Oh, Jess. I love this cheese. Awesome. Let's go to last cheese. Okay, let's go to last cheese. We're gonna also pair it with the Niders uh, Niders Ranch Ooh. Con Valley Napa Merlot, 2007, 88 to 90 points. Parker, 28 bones. Uh, it's a 75% Merlot, 25% Cabernet, but you call it Merlot because it's still 75%. Um, so so yeah, I just want to say real quick, you know. I'm not 100% sure on that production. Gary's right. So I could be confusing this with other cheeses that we've got from Switzerland. We're doing a big Swiss push right now because they're so... We're big on the Swiss? Uh, right now, I, f I feel like we, we, like we really cheese. are. We have a good we have a good source for so it. So you cut off... Can we eat this with the rind? Can you eat you the You can rind? eat this rind. Absolutely. I don't think it's it's something I'd recommend doing because it's more of a, of a washed rind impact and it's got a little bit of moldiness to it. But that's fine. It's I solid. like the mold. Yeah. You want to do the wine first or you want to do the cheese first? Cheese. Right on. So this is raw cow's milk. It's only aged for like 12 to 20 weeks. So this was goat. This, this was is, this was pasteurized goat. This, this is, is pasteurized cow. This is this is raw, raw cow. cow. This is a raw cow's milk cheese. Or what does that mean? That means it's unpasteurized. They don't cook the milk and try to kill off the bacteria. There's a big, big how to do about the... I mean, I can get into it for hours. But well, basically... We don't want that. Yeah, basically this is a raw milk one to impact the texture. So the bacteria is still in here? Yes, the bacteria. There's always bacteria in everything, but they kill it with the pasteurization method. So, well, this is really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, cheese is top, right? Like, it's so much mm. easier for me to pan a wine. Mm. All the cheese we carry is, is is like we don't carry that many. Like, it doesn't seem like we don't carry commodity stuff, or we do, but like. I don't know. It's it's all good. I, I'm, I'm I'm really liking this the way the flavor develops. Well, it's so this. smoky, right? I well, get a huge smokiness on this. At first, I get that I get a grassy hay type, mm -hmm. like smoked hay, and then it goes into that, like smoke, like barnyard. A, yeah, like I mean, a, it gets barnyardy. Oh, it gets. I, I feel mean, like I'm eating a little bit of manure. Oh yeah, which is fine by me. That's what I like about this cheese because it has that. There's not a lot of solid cheeses that carry that flavor profile. It's more you get those creamy like pois styles that mm -hmm. have that barnyardiness. But with washed dry cheeses, sometimes you'll get that. And this is a lot more interesting than some of the stuff we have downstairs. And I love that barnyardy. Sorry, I can go off. No, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm thrilled with the excitement. I'm excited about barnyard. We don't like excitement on this show, so calm it down. Um, I prefer sticking bare feet in my mouth kind of flavor, actually. I, I, listen, I'm with you. know I want the weirdest. I know you, you do. Know. I know. I try to bring something not too over the top, but this is close. This one right here. Love the way that color looks. This nose is very fruity. Yes. Like almost too fruity for me. It smells like fruit punch with like a shot of vodka. It feels like it feel, feels like a school dance, mm -hmm. and somebody you know slipped a quick little like fifth of vodka <laughs> in because it smells like the fruit punch, but then you can get the alcohol in the back end. Let's give it a whirl. A little worried. I love the smell though. The acidity from the cheese paired up with the wine. Is that what I did think it? It's, is that, it's that clashing a little bit? Clashing a lot. I think Hamer missed the boat on this pairing because the acid, the double combo of acid, is like really high on the mm -hmm. boat, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt like I felt like we just took a spritz of like seltzer water, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There's yeah. high acid, almost like licking a battery uh, on the palate, which is really uncomfortable. Wow. Yeah. But the, Alkaline. Um, Did you see but the fruit's this? there. And the second time, it was a little bit less. I'm a little worried about this combo. I'm not feeling this wine at all. Mm. Um, the fruit is fake to me, to be honest with you. Oh, by the way, I noticed a couple, the, the other day, there were some notes that I said, you know, not fake. And then I also, then I, in the same wine, on the same review, I said a little fake. I guess that's just how it developed in my palate. I have to go back and rewatch it. Let me rewatch it, but... Going back to the Toro, you know, I speak out loud with you guys, so I think at first it felt, you know, not as fake, then it felt a little fake, or first it felt fake. I, I gotta rewatch it, but, you know, to sum it up, because I remember the wine, it's just a hair fake, you know? It's such a big bomb, it just got a little fakiness to it. This feels really fake, then I think the pairing was tough on the wine, so I'm not gonna completely crush the wine, but at the same token, um, I think the wine's kind of off-balanced, uh, I think the tannins are kind of sharp, and I feel like the wine 
It's just not that interesting to me. It's it, the, the flavor is very fake to me. You, you didn't get the fruit that was on the nose too much either. It's more. I like, didn't like the fruit on the nose, though. I understand. You know, it's very friendly. Um, yeah, I'm not feeling it. I'm gonna uh, weird day. 89 plus in the first wine. Do not score on the second wine, and I'm gonna go 84 on this last wine. I'm not feeling it at all. So, but the cheese. What do you think of the cheese? Tell me about what you. Writing. I like the cheese. You were but the cheese. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> the cheese. Yeah. The cheese I thought showed really well, and I'm gonna make a little what, cheese. Sandwich what was your favorite? Here. Which one's your favorite? If you had to pick a favorite. If I had to eat one, I'd probably eat the middle one. Right on. Yeah. Because you like that texture. I do. You know, I always want the softest, stinkiest cheese. I wanna. I literally want to like soup my cheese. Okay. So you'd want one a little bit more aged. Much more. You know, mm -hmm. what you did in a comparison with one that's aged and one that's not. That would have been cool. We'll do that next time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being on the show, right right? On, man. Thanks a lot for having me. No problem. You what? get to ask the question of the day. Get, get to ask the question of the day. Yeah, any question you want. I'd love to know what everybody's favorite cheeses are. Because if there's something that we're missing, I really need to know. Because I want to have the best portfolio out there. So I'm all ears. Yeah, let's link up Justin's email as well. Anybody yeah. have any cheese questions or want any help with that, also hit up Justin on that. And, uh... And uh, that's it. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the cheese world.